Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Nutrient Egg Solutions Western Showdown, the largest international curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you decided to join us to watch some of the top teams from around the world participate in this event. My name is Jesse Hamannick, and I'm the Vice President and Country Head of Nutrient Egg Solutions Canada. Like farming, curling brings our communities together and Nutrient Egg Solutions is committed to promoting the diversity of sport within the communities where we work and live. We're so grateful to the Western Showdown team for allowing us to partner with them to bring you this event and I want to wish you all, the teams, a safe and successful event. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Nutrient Ag Solutions Western Curling Showdown. We're so glad you've decided to join us to come see some of the world's best curlers participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director for RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan in support of curling in our community, we're also proud to support the 2023 Nutrient Ag Solutions Western Curling Showdown, as RBC is committed to working with our community to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport in the community in which we live. Thank you to everyone on the organizing committee for putting this great event together. And on behalf of RBC Dominion Securities, enjoy the tournament. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares, always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Good morning from Saskatchewan, or uh, good afternoon if you happen to be watching from Ontario, or anywhere east. I want to welcome you once again to the Saskatchewan Curling Stadium live coverage of the Nutrient Ag Solutions Western Showdown. My name is Sean Joyce. We've got the event action for you here this morning. Kevin Cooley, Corey Dropton. Winner moves on to a qualifier at 5.45 this afternoon. They'll be facing the loser of one of the B qualifiers. You lose this game, you go home. Big game here for these two teams. 
We've got action already in the first hand. The center guard throwing up. Rock around to the top eight. Got a freeze. A draw to the corner. A hit. Now onto the sixth stone of the end. This is the second for the drop to team Mark Fenner. The lead is Thomas Howell. Third, who actually skips the team. He's in the house. Andrew Scatera. On the right, as we look at it there, the fourth thrower, Corey Dropkin. It's a hit, rolls a little to the outside. You want to roll behind the guard, get it in behind the two line. I think he asking for the hit now from second man Jacques Gauthier. The lead for the team, sweeping on the right. Eric Martin. Tyler Party, the third, and getting the white might be down just a little bit. The skip of this team, the fourth lock thrower, Kevin Key in the house. Made the hit, but uh, that little bit down weight over curled on him. Shooter rolls all the way out of play. Intent to uh, play to that open side. Sitting one behind cover right now. Love to just keep playing out to the corner for the rest of the end and try to secure an easy beat. Nothing out of the brushes here. They're not even bent over. That's usually an indication this might be a little warm. Starting to Starting to curl and maybe slowing down while it does. Comes to rest, pull back 12. Second shot. Kevin Keeley not willing to concede the easy deuce. He's going to play the come around. Tyler Tardy, left hand is this is out turn. Brushes were on this most of the way down. The weight's not bad, but he's trying to find both of those stones at the top of the house. He just rubbed the yellow one. Just enough to straighten it out, leaves piece exposed. Enough for Andrews to bear to make a play and probably hold the shooter. Just cleaning. Now they've gone to the offside sweep looking for some extra curl. Didn't panic early, but it's a great buy. Eliminate the uh, yellow stone in the back. Well, for try to roll in, sit two of these. Yes, and from the other end, might have been to throw the guard. Might be looking at the run back as well. Kevin wants to talk about it. How are you going to make his way down to the far end? I'm not sure whose idea it was. It looks like it was Tyler suggesting 
tucked around the top of the ball the corner on the yellow. Great shot if you make it. It's a hard shot. He's very close to what he gets through, though. play some kind of an out-turn draw again. I, I just didn't see the call whether they settled on trying to come in again or they could just be playing a straight guard as well. That's an option. Rush is just cleaning early. Waiting on the line, really. Starting to curl now and they pick up the brush. Like they were playing this as a straight guard all the way. That's those two guards fairly close together, so there might be an opportunity for the double deal. Like the call here is Andrew's going to try to hit the stand with the stand line first. Come across the top and the other one clip it and hopefully this the shooter's up and out of the way as well. Nothing out of the brushes. This time he's a little wide on the first one. Might have been a fair wide on that one as well. Hit them almost at exactly the same time. Did probably get the one first because it's still on the right side. Leaves his shooter for a guard. He did look at the uh, first one a little thicker. Might be enough of the red stone at the top as well for the bail before he dropped in to try a slash double over the top of the one. Kevin Hugh is looking at that. He'd be able to hold the shooter if he made that. Kevin was thinking about hitting this yellow stone as fast well for the last one. He ain't got it then now. Put and roll in the eight, puts it two. Even if uh, Corey dropped to make that slash double. You're still not rocking back. Probably not critical that he rolled into the eight. Before drop, he's going to play something on the drop in the middle, but it's very important that he stick around. Makes the hit, the roll towards the middle, and this might roll a little too far. Before he dropped him on the brush, as soon as it hits the line, gets it out the back of the ring, it is still in play. Still thinking he's got room around the outside to play the intern for him. Intern tap on the shot stone, roll to the outside, sit two. Corey making his way back down. Not sure if he saw something else from the half. Or if maybe it just doesn't look as good. He certainly can't see a lot of that stone. And he's the paragraph there. Very straight. We don't know if he might have done something to the relief. He didn't see anything.
day four here from Swift Current. We have seen uh, all week long that these rocks run very straight between the hog line and the hog line in. It will throw a lot. So just because you can only see a small piece of that rock doesn't mean it's not possible to hit the key here. It's human after the hog line now. They're sweeping from the offside looking for some extra curl. Again, just going to rub the edge of that rock this time. Pushes it out into the open on the other side, but not able to remove it from play. So that's two already down that side that uh, ran a little straighter than we expected. Kevin Fee really now the decision is to throw a straight guard on that and you try to chuck it around to the top of four foot six feet. If you do that, you have to bury a, or the shooter so you don't need a double. The indication is they're going to try to come into the top of the four foot, sit two. Get a sliver of your shooter underneath the yellow stone at the top of the eight foot. They'll also protect against the no shot stone. Before you drop, you may have to play the wide in turn draw. Try to catch the edge of the button. I think you always got left to score. Final stone of the opening end for Kevin Key. Gordon dropped in his last rock. Key sitting one right now in the corner of the button. It's open. Seem to bring another one in top four. Brushes it close, but looking for curl. Sweeping for some curl. He's got to get the edge of this rock under cover or he'll leave a double. Even thinking they might be able to chisel in off their own. I think I heard a woe call at the end there, maybe thinking it was just freeze, but it was too late to make that decision. Doug Green the chance for Corey Drafton to make the double. Doesn't have to get the second stone all the way out, just have to get it all the way out of the eight foot. Look at it from the hack end, but it hits that right on the nose. It might not roll far enough. It's going to have to get a little bit to the inside. Uh -huh. uh, Andrew's clear. I clean up the path just in case they're down the first a little bit too solid. Again, it doesn't have to leave the ring, it just has to leave the input. Firmer away here just because he has to get close to the nose. He's starting the curl. Got to stay close to the nose if he's going to hold the shooter. Makes the hit, catches both reds. How far is the shooter going to roll? Now the shooter stopped before the red one. Put two points on the board for Corey Dropkin. He'll take a 2 nothing lead here in this C semifinal against Kevin Cooey. Cooey will have last rock at the end of the season. 
light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterland. Choose your new Neon Mix Doubles partner or make a statement with a Neon Curling Rock in your window. Also actual Letterlands. Use discount code WHOA for 15% off. Only at Letterlands.com. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed? More innovation? It's going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. SwiftCard is great because everybody that we do business with, we know on some sort of personal level. What I love about Swift Current is the vibrant arts and culture community. I really like Swift Current. We are not a big city, but the size of the city is really good and we have everything. Swift Current is a great sports town, great teams and great fans. People say, you know, good morning, hi, how are you, even though we don't know each other. So with the impact of my business and income, will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. Two points for Corey Dropkin in the first end to the first stone here in the second. They'll throw the center guard. Pass to the corner guard. Now the come around attempt for Thomas Howell. Five rock, three yard zone rule. Of course, in effect, the uh, no tip zone for these last year. In fact, for all competitive events, I believe this year. So we'll have to be careful coming by the center guard. That's why you see them sweeping, trying to get off that yellow one. And there's that big movement we've been talking about from the hog line in. Been like that all weekend long. So you actually to come around the corner, I would like that to be the moment he was closer to the yellow center. He was to the red corner. It's just about completely buried. Hard to do anything good with that uh, red on the corner. So Mark Bennett being asked to come around again, sit on top of their own shot stone, put two in the middle behind cover. They had initially called to sit on top of their own, but the line was holding out there for Stone, so they tried to come by it. Get behind it enough that he probably didn't leave a double. That was the fifth stone of the end, however, so no more free guards. That's really thinking about playing the run back. I feel we'll get rid of all three yellows and. Uh, the shooter ever so slightly off the center line. I'll be able to get it very far off this plane of triple. Keep 
Also talking about uh, coming around with, uh, a little tap on the shot stone. The one that's buried. The shooter will roll over on top of the stone that was just delivered. Jack Goche. It looks nice. They're waiting for the curl now. Sweeping from the offside to try to get the extra curl. Jack looks at that stone and spins across. Just a little bit past the uh, second, a little second shot. Now it was shot lock. Leaves room for Mark Bennett to play the hit and roll off the red sit three. Again, having to sweep from the offside to get some curl makes the nice hit roll into the pocket of the two yellows. Getting two looking at a run back now. We'll get all three of them. Can kill two, maybe can kill two and the guard. Stuff it. Close. The hit drives it back. Oh, it just rubs the side of that uh, red shot in the pocket. Moves all the yellows around, but doesn't kill any of them. Gets the shooter off the center line. Still a better situation now for B than it was. Dropped in the shot rock, the second shot rock. A little off the center line now. You can protect, but probably best you're looking at a force. The reason for this question is it's got nothing to do with what you can make. It's what are we, uh, what are we leaving if we throw the guard here? Bring the guard in fairly tight. Just pulling across the center line. Not so they don't leave the port through the shot stone. And keep away as much of the middle as they can. They don't want to leave uh, Kevin the thin double off the stone in the eight foot either. Right where they tap the ice. We may have to look at running that one back. Yeah. 
The run back's really his only chance to get rid of both the yellows in the forefoot. The risk with it is just because of how straight a line those rocks are in. You could jam. You could jam both of them. You could double jam. Jam the guard coming back. Jam the one at the top of the floor on the one at the back of the floor. It'd be a little unlucky if you put it like that and not get one of them out. On the brush on this one right away. Drives it across the top, does kill both yellows with the foot, and rolls his shooter all the way across the lead shot rockets goes. Now Corey Dropkins got a chair for his first thought was to come around the corner. The problem with that is that swing is not the eight foot wide open. You might leave a double from that stone. If you were buried around the corner, that would be really two shot behind cover. You can't leave that double to win the left guard shot. Warm. That one's going to come into the ring and ran quite straight on the move. Seen that a few times here this morning. Of course, these uh, the rocks would have been prepared for competition. Sanded, putting on prior to the event starting. We're into the fourth day now. It was Wednesday, well, Thursday, it's the one draw Wednesday. Possible we're starting to straighten out just a little bit. Still lots of movement. They maybe need to tighten up the room. An inch or two from what they've been doing all week. Big opportunity here for the two team. They give up two in the first. Another tardy. Big wave here. It's fairly close to the nose. Make the double and the flat rolling behind the corner on the other side of the center line. Makes the double. Not able to roll far enough. He had to put the fairly solid on the first one to make sure the double actually like needed the big weight. It's sitting two, but there's the slash double available. He rolled the buried on there. He's talking about three. Drop in here. Corner Rock probably jams. Half. Look up the beast thinking. Half is pretty close to making a double. And a third, you might, I mean, it's going to jam fairly solid with a third, but uh, these are lively rocks and should spin at least into the open, if not out the back. What kind of weight he's going to throw here? If he wants to hold the shooter, uh, what he needs to hit, he can't throw it real, real big and doesn't have to to make the double. A little bit more wing for error, though, if you throw up weight. Post might be a little thin. Fairly solid jam on the second one, but should spin back into the open. for a moment, just making his way back now. I expect we'll see him try to Christmas tree this around the corner guards. Yeah. 
we drop is that just all of that stone. So if you don't do something over there, you leave the possibility of thing rolling in behind cover. We'll be looking to bring this into the top 12, maybe bite the 8 foot. Half around the guard, and that means the shooter will be half covering the stone in the corner of the four foot as well. Very much a creature habit. He's got to throw these draws. You know he's always going to discuss the weight from the front end. Will not settle into the hack. So he's sure he knows what he wants to throw. Derek Martin on the brush from the inside. Firm clean so far. Got green by the guard, but uh, this is really good. He might be a little strong as well. But maybe we're trying to hold the line for that exact tap they got. And he kept curling. Would have left it exposed. Even with the tap, he gets that Christmas tree effect that we were talking about. He's got a piece of his shooter under the guard and the other edge of the shoot is protecting the shot stone. They dropped him to make a hit on either stone. He's going to have a hard time holding the shooter. Much Corey Johnson can do here to prevent a deuce. So to make sure you get this rock out of the ring, not too worried about holding your shooter. Not going to take too much risk of hitting one at the top of the eight foot. Makes the hit on Stone, does hold his shooter, but uh, rolls too far to be. Shot rock. It includes where he needs to get through for the draw to the button. It's kind of spying a little bit in there. For you, I think the preview is available for you at home as well if you're watching. I think this might have been the site of the previous draw to the button. Look at the stopwatches by the brushes, and then both brushes were down. I never lifted his brush, but he did have the head up on a few times. And that stone right in the top of the forefoot, 73. Answers that deuce in the first with a deuce of his own here in number two. We're all tied up. 
managed to at least Corey dropped him on that last drop in the third. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough. Try this. Makes your eyes pop. This could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Iced tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial. Financing that's in the field with you. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Third and just underway, the center guard going with the first stone. Come back from the break, we saw the stone delivered by Alex Howell to come around at the top of the eight. Now, Eric Martin with his second stone, if he come around and maybe nudge that back. From the other side. is really working hard to try to get this right down to the face. Leave a little bit of space between the two of them. Nice hand. See enough of the red. Thomas Howell being asked to come down and sit on top of the red. I think they'd like to get just over the top of it. Good. Not sure from the body language. It sounds like uh, they're not necessarily thrilled about that call from the other end. They're going to go right around everything except two. Three is. You don't get past the nose. You're just going to leave. Yellow, red, yellow lined up for Kevin Cruz. This one's starting to curl already. It's got a really nice line coming into the house here. Coming around a stone in the top of the 12 foot and it's two thirds buried at the top of the four foot. Jack Gokio looked to follow that down, sit on the face of it. Maybe on this angle, the corner. Stone to make play on the yellow later.
once he was by the one minute front, sweeping from the offside, looking to the left to throw, and maybe a little too much weight, he bumps off, pushes it in behind cover, and importantly, like, the shooter rolling out like that, he's doing for a center to play the hit ball under cover to get it through here. It'll all be buried. Given who is expecting the shot to be made. Not even looking at the rock they're hitting. A lineup on that center line, looking ahead to what they might be able to do about it. It's it rolls right across on top of the dome. Is what Kevin Cooley is looking at. You see enough of that red. Drive it onto the yellow in the eight foot. It doesn't catch the two at 12 foot. Either. Just rub the one just to uh, break them up a little bit. Should leave the cone you hit right in behind cover. And use the shooter and throw some weight at this. Keeps him way out of hand, still looking for curl. It's the hit. Does rub the stone at the top of the forefoot, and that big weight actually chills the back one. Spills everything out from behind cover. Mark Fenner being asked to make the hit on. It is Peckett's touch. You saw the indication. Went over to the outside. Didn't want anything to do with that guard. Keep the two yellows well spread out. Makes the hit. See, very quiet on the way. Had to be close to the nose. Make sure they got it out. Hits on what is second shot stone, one just delivered a roll under cover. They could make a roll under cover on the shot stone as well. With Bob Moose, you might be behind the T line, even if you're not. This race between that rock and the card. This ice. Make the hit. It's a bit of a rollover at the edge of that rock under cover. He dropped his first thought was to play the hit on that stone roll the corner. Have to be a little careful with this. Can't see all of it. If you hit it too thin, you put it onto your own. There's the three players at the other end can't play see the angle. They're not in love with the call. Between the rock, the hard way, they would like to make sure he's getting two. They'd like to get rid of this red stone, but uh, they don't like the risk associated with uh, could drive this on your own. Very quiet way, knowing that he needed to get as close to the nose as he could. Probably didn't use all of the broom either. Crashes the guard. The shooter across the board to more than spun back a little bit at the end, but still in play. 
not protecting the uh, ring. It's Tyler Tardy, the champ, to make a play on Shot Stone. Got a hit for two. Corner guard over there, baby. I think you want to roll behind that. Go behind the corner and see if you play that off of the corner three to it. See if it's going to get a boost. Now they have to make it as a hit and roll if they're going to get carried. Andrew Stapara skips the team but throws the third stone, looking for the hit and roll behind the corner guard. It's a hit, but it's going to be a little thin. It moves the red stone, but loses his shooter as well. Skip Stone still to come here in third in. Kevin T sitting one top 12, but where do you put the second round? It almost doesn't matter where you put it. You know, uh, before you drop him, he's going to hit and roll, try to hit and roll behind something. Top eight, but you think, thinking there, if you go top eight, but Corey Dropton makes the hit and roll behind something, it's going to be a shorter roll, or pardon me, a shorter freeze, shorter run back. Three drives. I think the minute they want to go back to the team. So then, if, if Corey Dropton plays the hit and Regardless of which way he goes, but he goes behind the corner and makes the roll perfect. He should be behind the key line. He would have come down to the three. Stone right on the T-line. It is shot stone. Go four foot. We're dropping out of roll either way. You can roll in behind the corner. Longer roll to get behind the corner, but uh, safer. And I say safer, and if you roll behind that stone in the top 12 foot, behind the T-line, Kevin Keyes, three this to it. You are not going to have a lot of room to spend. Behind the key line, if you make the roll very towards the corner as well. But then, if uh, then she lets the follow come down and freeze on top of it, he makes it pretty good. You've got all of the eight foot to score your single. You have to be careful, you know. Make sure you stay in the ring, so you won't be far. Kevin Key has got to be that stone to top 12. They need some curl here. They've gone to the offside sweep to try to get a little extra curl. They've already rolled out once this end. Makes the hit. The story of this game so far has been a number of stones that have run just a little bit straighter than what they're expecting them to.
the fourth one now, if I remember correctly, in the same spot. Great on Two in the first it's two here. So it does give Kevin Cruz a chance to come around his own stone top 12 foot. He's a dead around it before four foot. He doesn't look the dead there. Third behind cover. Might be able to grab a piece of the button. He makes it too hard for Corey Johnson to drop the left. He just dropped in the center for the blind. Room early and it's not curling yet. A couple of draws earlier that were already curling by this point. It's going to be a little strong. Shoot this in back right away. So we got Tim meets it at the T line. I get out the back of the house. So it will be a blank attempt for Corey Dropping with that draw sliding through. Needs to hit on the broom side. It's a fairly thick. He probably rolls into his own side. That's showing you just early in play, but I think he rolls into that. I don't think there's any bad luck he could have or he could still end up in the ring. Go boom side the blind. That's a little less than half on this first one. Probably roll under that for safe. If the corner does get underneath it, it's blank. Here in end number three, we're still tied two apiece. Kevin Cooley, Corey Drockman, winner moving on to qualifier. He will go home. I've been farming on my own right for 40 years now, I think. It's a very uh, wholesome enterprise. You have very, very busy periods when you have to go hard. So many of our windows are so tight that uh, you, you just can't afford to miss a couple days of seeding. When a producer places their trust in us, that when it's time for them to be able to make their living, we're gonna be there. That's a tremendous responsibility that it's not a one day a year thing, right? In order to actually deliver on that, you have to build your processes and you have to build your team and you have to have a, a mindset of operational excellence because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And it's our job to make sure that they don't go wrong. Or if they do go wrong, that we can fix it before it affects our customers. So with the impact of my business and income, Will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. Light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterlands. Choose your new neon mixed doubles partner or make a statement with a neon curling rock in your window. Also actual Letterlands. Use discount code WOW for 15% off. Only at Letterlands.com. Similar start here to this fourth end. The center guard is thrown up, coming around to the top of the fourth end. Uh, Eric Martin with his second start, just going to come down, sit on the base for that start.
and she's going into the break. Ready for this thing will be eliminated. Say, from the point of view, that's one of the advantages of triple knock. Like, the more you stand, if you're still playing, you're still alive. Women's event on here as well. A mutually in ag solutions Western showdown playing round robin pools. There will be teams playing in the next draw, sitting at two losses. Not only needing to win themselves, but they'll be looking around uh, to need some help from some other teams, and that's a little difference that you see in a draw with a round robin tool. You're not always in control of your own fate. These two teams know as long as you win them, they keep Thomas Howard with the on Redstone comes across with the shooter under cover, nudges his own shot to the corner of the button. It's mostly exposed now. To run the guard back. I heard the call is just a normal way they'd like to stick it. Cover. Keep the guard up in front of the ring. Runs the guard back about seven eight feet. Sticks it in the top of the board, but dead in behind cover. That was the fifth stone of the end, though. No two guard zone anymore. So, and Mr. Terra asked Mark Penner to play the run back. They'll have to do it just a little bit differently. He's looking to double the two reds. to go just a, a hair past the face. Makes the hit. Catches the second red. Rolls the shooter to a corner guard. Those shots are just not that easy. No, no matter how easy they make them look. Really open situation in the house now. It was Corey dropping. He's got shot rock on the edge of the floor and corner guard. And do not have to go too crazy here this early in the game. So he's just going to hit the shot stones. Pulls across to the back of the eight foot. Has a sliver underneath that corner guard at least. I'm sure he wanted that roll. Was another foot. There's probably calling for the come around the corner guard to be able to use that to back as well. As it is, after the month, I'm to play the hit roll back towards the center line. And get a little deeper in the house still. Plan B. I thought the initial indication was they were trying to roll towards the center line. I realized that was going to over curl on them. They tried to get another inch of curl and tuck it further in behind. Ends up making the hit, stays right there. With the same attempt for uh, Jack J. Oh, pardon me, there's Tyler Tardy. One of third stones now. Want to roll away from that corner guard for sure. Get to the back of the forefoot. Off the center line.
and Mr. Barrow with the hit stays there. So the drop could see really two ways to go about it. If getting to that corner guard, either you try to roll there, roll really deep, Kevin P follows you down, just like the rest of the end, you try to corner guard to set up two, or you look to exchange nose hits here a couple of times. And then when you play the hit over, you should be in front of the two line. However, that changes things. Tyler Hardy not able to make the move. It rolls over to the corner of the 12 foot. You want to hit that. Very and it's referring to the far end and just two shots because you play the hit and roll behind cover, they'll be well behind you. Or you could just draw around your own corner guard and just leave half of it exposed. The redstone at the back is well put upon it, but be careful not to jam on. This is a very defensive call. You make it perfect or you make it fourth. Makes it, stays right there. Different dilemma for Kevin Huey. He doesn't want to roll behind the corner guard because he does. He knows before he drops him will throw the draw. I think the discussion is they'd like to roll past the guard. Maybe into the back of the eight foot, closer to the center line. Makes a hit. It's going to roll just a little bit to the outside. It does hang on. Shot drop. We're dropping again. He's going to hit this thing. It's indicating now we're looking for the nose hit. On his last one, with his last one, he will try to roll Barry with the fourth shot roll. It does stay right there. We get a good indicate what's got to roll behind that corner. Last couple of hits here is running very straight. You see that green to the inside the edge of the rock, not throwing big weight, although I think they would be taking this make a little more weight than what they called for. Just past the halfway, already looking to sweep the curl. Makes the hit. Over curl that. Well, 
believe probably a thick half available for Corey Johnson to try the blind. Just has to decide if he's comfortable flirting with the guard. He's already decided to do it. It's just where do you hit the bird and how hard do you Two teams exchanged deuces in the first and second, and a blank in the third, and Corey dropped into his final stone here in the fourth. Looking to blank here as well. the brush fairly early. Boom by the guard. Still moving big though. Makes the hit. That big weight able to roll out easily. We've got a blank end again in, in number four. Still two all between Corey Dropkin and Kevin Dewey and maybe Dropkin is last rock the game today. I've got the bill. Oh, well, now, I've got the tip. Standard tip increased 2% this year. <laughs> That's why I keep you around. So, corn's looking great. Well, our crop plan is working. Mm, and we locked in that input financing at the perfect time. Mm -hmm. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough? Try this. Makes your eyes pop. <whistles> this could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Iced tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial, financing that's in the field with you. Third end in a row, we've got the team opening strip, center guard thrown. Come around. With last rock, drop the key. Derek Martin now being asked to come down, sit on the face of shot stone. It's an audible to trying to come around it at the last minute, but they didn't really have the, the weight for that.
weight was actually really good for the, for the Bruins attempt. They just didn't get to the line. That has been an ongoing problem for both teams here in this game. Uh, under curling on them a little bit. They're a long ways off. Now, they can get the results we're looking for. Thomas Howell to get the roll over the corner of his own stone. Laughing those yellows, but Kevin Dewey wants to come right around them. Maybe just a little bit straighter here to get into the rain afternoon, but uh, and it had been earlier in the week, but it's still pretty cool. And it doesn't really change the speed of the sleepers there. It's, it's been such late movement all week long that it, it, it really it's trying on the sleepers' patience. They just have to wait. They wait so long. They, they don't want to sleep it before it starts to break. And then once it does, they can do so much with. Uh, Influencing the curl, maybe get a little extra curl if they have to bury it. That's what you that one ends up. Really, but back eight foot. Then they're going to look to just move the guard. Drops and already caught them. They don't love the overlap on the yellow stuff. And the uh, red guard that the is essentially makes like three guards with a little bit. They peel it once. They're not really looking to put it back. I have to expect Mark Benner will be asked to peel the guard again. a little tighter this time. So the indication from Andy Stavera, they don't mind uh, flipping the yellow, losing one of them, but getting rid of the overlap. Close enough now that you could take a run at it. It's probably not very likely to dead jam it. Anyways, off into a plane to dead jam it. The hit oh, just by the face of that stone. So if you just rub that coming by, it might not even have killed either of the yellow stone. It's good enough to break up that, that angle. Gonna play the guard one more time. We know that at some point in time they throw one too many guards. The opposite team will just come around themselves. I can't believe they would do it this early. We're gonna throw at least one more guard. It's going to be a little bit higher to make an attempt to uh, touch the yellows a little tougher.
Corey Brock makes it seem like they'd like to come around now. And I'm just not sure, though, whether he really thinks he'd like coming around or he just wants to make sure Kevin Dewey thinks that if you put one more guard, we're going to come around the next time. Looks going to play the draw. Got a couple of options playing the draw from it. We're going to off the intern side. If he doesn't get by, he might leave a better lineup on the two yellow. Might actually be playing that on purpose now. I think it's going back as well. The playing the split on the stone that the, the second of the two yellow stones, which is the C about half of it. Gotta push it into the eight foot, get rid of that overlap. Roll the shooter into the eight as well. Not sure they can get either one of them in far enough to be shot rock, but now it's mostly about getting rid of that overlap. The second, third, and fourth, that red at the back of the 12th, or back of the eight foot stretch was pretty lonely. For some curl here that actually looks like maybe they're playing the top one. And that last little bit of spin by the shooter, I'm not sure if he shot it off. It might still be cool at the back of the eight foot, regardless of the second, third, and fourth spread out at the top of the eight foot. For the drop of the team, that uh, those rocks that they can promote. And the one that might be shot rock is at the very least if they had to, they could come off that rock. It's already looking to make a hit on what is third shot rock. It comes just across the face, rolling a piece at least underneath that yellow stone on the center line and uh, maybe create another overlap situation at the top of the eight foot. That's it. And we'll just far enough to uh, overlap them. So he dropped him once and he at the end of the So he moves when he's going out. Kind of looks like. Uh, it's his own yellow stone, the one that's intersecting the center line. You can't see all of it. It's it, not hard. You know, back 12 ish weight. You're going to pop that red right beside it out into the open, probably into the 12 foot somewhere. Shooter rolls a little bit to the right if you look at it from the overhead. But that yellow stone off the red is going to come back to the right as well. You could uh, you bring both yellows over together. Have the rock in the 12 foot cover the one that's back into the corner of the button. Again, you could be sitting shot. I think the red at the back is shot right now. It's not, not hard, but it's close. You could end up sitting shot third and fourth here after this. Shot rock would be buried by a rock in the 12 foot.
two questions really here is how hard do you want to hit this? And then this is the spot. We've already had four rocks in the game that have gone a little too straight on him. We even had one that went right by. The discussion there about how much ice do we need to make. On the back, we now back away and sweeping for curl off the room by the guard. Maybe a little thin on the first one. Again, another rock that really didn't curl quite as much as they thought. Just it's a touch on the edge, moves the red over. Shooter spills into the A foot. So he nudge that other stone up a little bit. So it is definitely dropped and pretty shot rock right now. Might be a triple there for seven two. Even in the stone that's still intercepting the center line, have your shooter come across back into the stone that was just delivered, and then back to the well, you shot stone. Really thin on the first one. Whether it's five or the second one, you won't get the third one at all. Almost can't hit that first one too thin. It's one quarter of a rock at most. Even if you miss the rock, it's half of the twelfth at all together. You just come getting on the side of a shot rock right now. You'll be sitting too. It comes across, does just get the uh, yellow and pushes the other one a little bit forward. And face corner frozen behind it to sit three. Corey dropped him, looking like he's going to have to score here anyway. I think he may just try to get forced to two. He's going to play the draw. Indication is they're going to come right to the back one. This may be just because you're facing three. Come to the back one, you expect seven two follows it down and probably fourth. But uh, if you put this in the front of the house anywhere, we'll cover it. I think we've got a number of rocks that come out, come off of to get at it. And then you might be looking at a steal. You know the breakfast yet. We're standing up fairly straight. Starting to curl now, but this looks like it might be a little bit strong as well. The combination of that spot maybe being a little straighter today and the extra weight slides by it. The Kevin Key sitting. At least two. Might be three. Give him a chance to draw in a spot where he may give you a steal, though.
Not a real big surprise here, Kevin Dewey off for the out turn. Jimmy Park did so well. Goes the intern really well as well. But, uh, more comfortable, more confident, I guess, in his out turn. This, this particular case, there also could be a factor that uh, hasn't been a problem for the food team, but we've seen a number of the dropping feed stones on that intern side run down. A little bit straighter today. Could just be that there's a spot in the ice on that uh, intern side. Wants to bury this. In this in the top four foot, and he bites the button behind Kelly. He's got a chance to steal here in the fifth end. High game, Kevin Cooey, Corey Drofton. Final stone for Cooey without last round. Getting a little tighter by the guard, like this, it's out into the open. Maybe just a sliver. After Corey Dawson to make a Corey Dawson for the no hesitation up into the draw. It's a similar draw to what he just threw. Now, yes, he was heavy on the last one, but he was trying to come to a rock and back loop, but anyway, he wasn't that far off where he was trying to throw. The line he was looking for. Corey Dropkin, final stone here in the fifth end, facing three, at least might be four. Shot rock fully in the fourth foot, needs a piece of the button. Pushers didn't want to go early. This was really starting to curl. He's got to get by that stone at the top of the four foot. Actually, he's going to rub off it. He might have needed that rub. Even as it is, I think it might have spun just a little bit too far. Oh, close. We're going to measure. And somehow that seems fitting. We're two all playing the fifth. It's going to post game all the way through. And we'll be close enough for at least one measurement in this game. Had a chance to do a few games here from Jeff Kerr. I said it once, and I'll say it again. Every time you have to do a measurement on a televised game, the stuff is always at the other end. So we'll have it now. This competition will be the team to measure their own rocks, so we'll see. Tyler Tardy and Andrews Rivera in the house. Boy, it's really close. We might have to wait to see who gets into the hacks first to determine who scored because nobody pointed at it. We know somebody puts up a single point. Looks like it might be a steal of one. Or drop them thinking they might have had one went back check the pinhole, but it's Derek Martin throwing the rock out of the corner. So put a steal of one on the board for Kevin Cooley. He'll have a one point lead in the last rock. 
Light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterlands. Choose your new Neon Mix Doubles Partner or make a statement with a Neon Curling Rock in your window. Also actual Letterlands. Use discount code WOW for 15% off. Only at Letterlands.com. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed? More innovation? That's going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Swift Current is great because everybody that we do business with, we know on some sort of personal level. What I love about Swift Current is the vibrant arts and culture community. I really like Swift Current. We are not a big city, but the size of the city is like really good and we have everything. Swift Current is a great sports town, great teams and great fans. People say, you know, good morning, hi, how are you, even though we don't know each other. So with the impact of my business and income, Will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. After the measurement, it is a steal of one for Kevin Cooley. Takes the one point lead into the sixth. And with the lead, they call for the first one in the forefoot. Thomas Howell shares the corner guard. And now, Eric Martin will be looking to the next shots. After the minute, I didn't see the call. I don't know if they're coming right into the rings. Try to be on the center line for sure. Still not sure if they actually wanted that in the rings or if they were sweeping at the end because they needed to get it curl enough to protect shot stone. They're going to ignore it regardless, asking Thomas Howell to come around the corner guard to see the first look. Brings it around into the full 12 foot, and it is dead buried behind the corner. That Goche now being asked to come around the corner. Maybe nudge that out in the open. Get on the corner, but it wouldn't be bad either. Got the lead here, just looking the way it's not give up two. This is still just a bit stone in the end. We'll be able to hit something on the next one. Side sweep trying to get close to the Yellowstone if they could, but still gets it fairly thin and rolls off, which is even further in behind cover. Not as many pieces that you can see is on the outside. Who is sitting two for the time being? Mark Bennett and Lucky. Trying to hit on the stone, it was just delayed, and 
roll in front of Shot Rock. Just a little bit thin makes the roll, but all the way across the loop, but on the other side. So it's a nice setting shot, still at the top of the button. Second and third belonging to Dropkin. Third shot, Rock is going very by the corner. And he's looking at me running on that corner to try to kill two yellows. The only way he can kill two yellows is. No double available on the other side. Jack Gauthier. Big weight on the intern. Can you make the run? Jack drives to by the stone in the rings. That's managed to roll the shooter all the way across. The two Yellowstones both open now. Harris' first thought was to try to freeze on a shot stone. If this call is coming from the other end, they're going to put the guard back. This rock, the one we're trying to cover, is just third shot, but it's the one that's high enough in the ring that uh, the other two might be able to come off it and do some damage. Places the guard, so we're going to ask once again for the run back. But this time, Tyler Tardy. It's just close. Makes contact with the stone in the rings and still get out of play. Shooter rolls back towards that center line, but Shot Rock is still exposed. Reverse stag on that court if you wanted to play at shot rock, but that's a lot of weight now. You have to play the double. Or in this case, it looks like Corey Dawkins is going to just playing the hit and roll. So they look to drive that red between the red and the yellow in the ring, roll the shooter over behind the cover. Not trying to hit the double at all. To play the double, you probably have to hit it on the broom side, go over the top. Will the shooter to the open side? Boy, it makes that perfectly dead berry. Passes the redstone between the two in the rings. So good, Kevin Cruz looking at the run back. He could certainly make a play on uh, what is second shot rock, but it's hard not to leave a double. And this rock is buried so well, you're probably leaving a deuce in play. Tyler Cardi makes a run back on his first, makes another run back on his second. And the shooter does hang on for a bite at the edge of the 12. And that's important because it certainly looks like that would take the blank out of play.
Andrew Sapera now looking to hit and roll behind cover. The opportunity they've been waiting patiently for to get a play on Shot Rock. As, as has been the problem for the drop the team so far today, a little bit of an underthrow. He actually rolled broomside and leaves a double for Kevin Cooley to sit two. might be easier if he gets the back stone first. If he gets the higher stone first, he gets the indication off to Kevin. You have to be careful not to spin out over the top. higher one first, he's got to hit it very thin. He actually could hit the backstone first and put the other one all the way out the side. So it throws enough weight to be able to make it that way. Caught the first thin. That's the problem with hitting that higher rock first is you get so much action on the shooter. It spins across, catches his own stone, and spins out. Now the blank possibility for Corey Drafton. Still has that one corner guard to work with and chance to perhaps get a cheap deuce. One good draw. We might have no choice left to try the run back. And just how deep they get with this draw. At the tee line, or behind it certainly, but at the tee line you might see Kevin Cooley try to follow it down. Two opportunities for uh, Corey Drafton to draw in the fifth, and he's just about a foot heavy on each of them. The Rushers have not touched this one either. This is definitely going to be deep. Harry Cardi meeting it at the T line. Hides it to the back 12. It is buried. By being left on back, he actually giving Kevin Cooey a little bit to think about. To follow it down, you get the fours. Deep enough, you could even in the indication was just tap it through. Make sure there's no chance for two. Some suggest he might just play a draw at the top of the house, but that's a pretty long guard, and you need to give up two. I don't think you'll ever look at that. Look to follow it down for sure. Just not sure whether they're wanting to tap it through. The only problem you might have if you're trying to tap it through is don't get right to the nose. You don't have to roll very far before Corey Dropton will have a chance to play for the blank. You need to stay dead in behind cover here. There's Martin just cleaning. Got Blakely picking it up as it crossed the hog line. 
lots of room by the guard. They're trying to get as much curl as they can to get to the nose now. He's in danger of hitting this thin enough he doesn't get it out. Or just enough to get out of the 12 foot, but does roll out into the open and leaves Corey Johnson the chance to blank the six then. Who played this entire end like he could get with the blanket? He might actually be happier with the blank than a force because the force would give him last rock in the odd end. He might be thinking here to get the force in seven and have last rock coming home. Things first, Corey Johnson has to make the uh, hit and roll out for the blank, but. Uh, he was thinking blank in six and force in seven. You might see him throw a guard in seven. Came in here in six. We're going to find out shortly. Corey dropped in with the blank. Then the two continues to lead by one. Corey dropped in. They'll have last drop again in number seven. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Well, what do y'all think? Too blue? Not blue enough. Try this. Makes your eyes pop. This could be our best yield yet. And didn't we get this seed at a great financing rate? Yeah, we did. Ice tea? Great idea. Let's talk more about next year. I got some thoughts. And I've got some numbers. Nutrient Financial. Financing that's in the field with you. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Speculated about it before we went into the break, and he does. But he calls for the center guard to start things off here in the seventh inning. And the bear calls for the come around. It's going to be a very part of it. He's come right down to the face of that stuff. Need to wait to get to that stone off the earth by itself. And uh, we'll control them just a little bit. And I mean, really, he's only about a foot heavy on that. In the story, the whole game, they don't quite curl as much as you hope. Rubs off that stone, puts out in the open. Chance for Thomas Howell now to remove that sit too. So it rolls a little bit out the side, but uh, might have stayed close enough to the level. I don't know if Kevin Dewey will play it just yet. We want to see a blank here. Let's 
team. John Doce once again to try to freeze on the corner of shot stone. Again, nothing out of the brushes. Starts the curl with the cross at the hog line. You can just try to help it curl over a little bit farther. And once again, just rubs off that stone. Sits where there's a chance to remove it. Just that little bit heavy. He just couldn't really do anything with it. No question they're going to hit that red zone. All the debate here is about where do we roll, where can we roll. They're, they're all grouped. There's not a lot of room to roll. Room side, you're going to roll into your own stone. It's hard to get all the way across the state would be great, but the last option to discuss would be to roll all the way across the roof to the other side. The problem is you can't get very far across the face of this stone because of where the guard is. You can for curl again. It's just past the nose and rolls on top of his own shot stone. He's the two in the middle group, but the guard in the way. I think he would try that same breeze. He's only the third shot now. That's not good enough. Looking at coming off the yellow at the edge of the eight foot. How we make a double? Try to make either double. You hit the first little thing. You come behind the one at the top of the four foot and catch the one at the top of the butt. Maybe the best result is the hardest shot. Much easier to go into the one at the top of the four foot. Not necessarily looking to kill the second yellow either. They're going to get the one that's right beside the broom, come across and try to move that one under the top of the floor, but it's really flat and you have to throw it super hard to kill it. But uh, the yellow, yellow line up at the top of the floor foot is a problem for him. You know, he needs to move it over. Be a little thin on the first one. He does come across and kills that second one, but the shooter still to the back of the eight foot. Mark Benner the chance to make the play on the redstone. Roll further over to the corner. For the drop team at this point, it's all about keeping some distance between their two rocks and ideally not leaving any kind of angle for doubles. Three, though, back to uh, his original thought. Does not want to see a blank end here. He's going to look to freeze to the face of shot stone. Tyler right, Tardy on his out turn to the left hander.
this time. You make a nice mud step going back just a little bit, using some to an angle. Yellow drop from Stone on the button. Continues to be shot rocked at that uh, Stone just delivered. The red one, Pablo Porta. A dangerous Stone for Billy Drop and a usable Stone for Kevin Cooley. Just to try to freeze the inside corner of it. I think that Eric will do it. Kent with a blank, so you could just feel the guard, force Kevin Key to do something. You can't just blast him out, so you can just chance the blank. Third stone here, I, I tend to believe you feel the guard. He's going to put it back at least once. The concern for the Drocken team has to be that if you come around now, sit corner frozen on the red stone, you might get forced, you know? But there's not a lot of room to try to score a second point like that. I guess the other part of the conversation, I don't know whether that's in the head of Andrew Stefara or not, but yeah, he could keep talking about it. This is the uh, seventh end, so the fourth time we've gone in this direction, and the drop team has had at least one rock every end, and a couple of them have had two rocks going this direction, in this spot, where they didn't get the team we were looking for. So maybe a little gun shy to throw it again. They're going to throw that freeze. They have to get to the inside of the red. If you stay on the outside, you just leave everything queued up with Kevin Dewey. So in the end, they're going to play the peel on the guard. Discussion had to be that I expect to do to do it one more time. But they've probably already discussed what they're going to play on the next one. Makes the peel. The Tardy was down at the far end uh, discussing the options with Kevin, making his way back to the hacks now, but it looks like they are going to just replace the guard. Tyler Tardy with his first one made the nice freeze tap. Just looking to guard that stone now. Looking for that last little bit of curl as much as they can just so that they didn't leave freeze available from the outturn side. Could be there. There might have been some hesitation within the drop the team in the last one because they didn't like that into it. They, they had a few rocks run straight there. The guard's a little more in line. You could probably get to the center line set, side of that second shot stone from the outturn now. It's 
still an argument to make for Peter Bernard. What does Kevin do here? Like the argument for healing the guard for one to one. He's always going to have a, a chance to get shot rock with the second start. The problem with what he is, he can't separate his red rock. He's going to have to put the uh, red at the top of the fourth of the red at the, the right hand side so he not only the first box either group or roll the shooter out, either one would get not a chance to cheat here. He's going to make the play on uh, Kurtz. Shot's the only one at the back of the eight foot. Either team wants to be the first one to address those two stones in the forefoot. The reason being is it doesn't matter who plays it or how, you're going to have to leave a double on your own two stones. Both of these teams are so good at playing doubles, you just you don't want to leave one for the opposition. To stay right there. Great job on the brushes. They hold it right at the bottom. Problem now for Corey Dropton. If you hit that on the nose again, it might be a double for the off the Off the stone in the back, It'll freeze to it too, I guess. It'll freeze to the inside corner of it. No chance for a double. You know, what can they do with the top stone? Is there a way you can remove it past the yellow and still hold your shooter? Really tough. roll off the back stone that might take away the double chance however if you roll there's, there's a way you could roll right to a spot where you leave everything in line and make the double actually easier you have to either roll past the center line or just roll about a rock stick really thin on the first one looks like they've uh Settle on hitting the stone at the top of the eight foot, or out of the four foot, pardon me. And the catch half or just a little less than half. Roll across and sit somewhere in front of that stone. The 
They will want to stay for second shot here. Crucial you stay in the range. You would like to stay for second shot. You might have, you know, that Kevin Dewey's going to to play on shot rock. You might, you might have to leave a double. This is more weight than I expected. Then you playing the double on the Reds here. Then comes across, does make the double, sits right there. Boy, that was a great shot by Corey Dropkin. A little bit of risk involved with it. You ever hit the first one too thick? Roll over the top of the second one. And you're forced for sure. But a great result because it made the, the double for Kevin Cooey just as tough. It's just as thin. For Kevin Cooey, even if you make it, you're looking at a blank here. Perfect result to drop when he's either got a shot at the blank or a shot at two. Kevin could be throwing this quiet, try to just hit and roll in front of the edge. Swept it, puts it curling, maybe overcooked it, overcurled it a little bit, makes a hit. But not able to make the roll in front of the yellow. Could be a case here of uh, Kevin Fu is more comfortable giving up to and having a hammer than he was to uh, get the blank, anyways. Play the shot and try to roll in front of it. I think the last shot for Corey dropped more difficult. So it'll be a chance for two. He's to hit it just slightly off the nose to pass it by his own stone at the back of four foot. Kevin Cooey with a 3-2 lead. Corey dropped him. His final stone looking to pick up two and take the lead into the eighth end. They're on the brush early on this one. Got to hold the line to pass it by his own stone at the back of the forefoot. His shot well swept. Well called. They will pick up two points here in the seventh end. They can take the lead. Kevin Cooey will have last rock coming home. I've been farming on my own right for 40 years now, I think. It's a very uh, wholesome enterprise. You have very, very busy periods when you have to go hard. So many of our windows are so tight that uh, you, you just can't afford to miss a couple of days of seeding. When a producer places their trust in us, that when it's time for them to be able to make their living, we're gonna be there. That's a tremendous responsibility that is not a one day a year thing, right? In order to actually deliver on that, you have to build your processes and you have to build your team and you have to have a, a mindset of operational excellence because there's a lot of things that can go wrong and it's our job to make sure that they don't go wrong or if they do go wrong, that we can fix it before it affects our customers. So with the impact of my business and income, will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. Light up your love for curling with our customized wool neon LED lights from Letterlands. 
choose your new Neon Mixed Doubles partner or make a statement with a Neon Curling Rock in your window. Also, actual Letterland. Use discount code WOW for 15% off. Only at Letterlands.com. Eighth and perhaps final end underway here from Swift Current, the Nutrien Ag Solutions Western Showdown. This is Sean Joyce, happy to join you here on the Saskatel Curling Stadium. Bring you this C event game. Winner moves on to a qualifier at 5.45 local time today. It's currently on the ice playing in a, a B qualifier. The loser of that game drops down to play the winner of this one. The loser will be eliminated from this year's competition and was on their way home. We think they didn't need the extra pressure. The center guard going to start the end, and the corner guard attempt did not get as far off the center line as they might have liked, but that's maybe part of what's causing the extra time here, the thought for Devin Dewey. Can't really use that corner guard where it is. I guess you come around from the wide side. Doesn't really want to come around the yellows. That's the easier looking shot. No mics directly on the players. There are mics out at ice level. I heard Kevin say something about running it back. I don't know if he's meaning on this shot, but uh, concerned about leaving the double peel on the red if they do that. If you run it back, you have to stick it because the, uh, the stone you're hitting initially would be the yellow stone in the free guard zone. You can't remove it from the center line or from play. So looking to throw the corner guard, I believe, on the other side now. Probably like to get this one a little bit wider. Nothing out of the brushes on this one and it's back right away. The chance this is going to slide into the rings, I think. And it's going to be in the rings. It may as well be behind the T line, hoping it to get a nose hit, at least it's rock to make it a freeze to later on that. They won't be happy with that. If you did that in front of the rings, it would have been in the free guard zone. You wouldn't be able to make a play on it. It's an uncharacteristic miss there for Derek Martin. Mark Fenner with a chance to make the hit to make the early call for Curl. And rolls to the edge of the 12th, but it does stay in play. Could have made an argument for rolling out on that one anyway. Box is never going to help you, and it might get in your way later on. We had already discussed uh, the possibility of double peels. I just didn't want to throw another corner guard just so they don't leave the chance for the double peel. They're going to come around the two yellows right now. Back of the eight, I think, with the call. I don't need to be that far back, not just for uh, getting buried, but he needs to leave some separation between the yellow and the red. Coming to the back, he placed uh, the drop the team to follow it down.
if you're backing away from this one, too. It's got a lot of line yet. Waited as long as they could for the start to curl and still just gets to the edge of the button. You can see from the back end, still daylight, room for uh, Jacques Gauthier to get to the inside, hit and roll under cover. should still be complete in front of the team line too. This is a, a good opportunity to try to set up the deuce early in this eighth end. Front. It makes a little move at the hog line. Maybe a little more of a move at the hog line than they were expecting. Rolls in behind cover, but rolls far enough that uh, he's behind the sea line. Same shot is there if they want to come down, sit on the face again, not to make it. The double run is there as well. Two reds in the ring, who's actually if it, either one first, it's probably could probably kill them both. Look to hit it uh, just off the nose on the center line or on the, on the broom side. Under the stone at the top of the 12, back into the rocks in the forefoot. A little thin on the first one, drives it back and does catch one of the red stones, but rolls to the edge of the eight foot. He needs to be two, he's sitting one at the back four foot, two guards to work with. I think they only get half around the uh, yellow guard now. That raised stone at the edge of the eight foot would be a rock to jam on as well. Something else, I'm not sure what they asked about. This he could hit the stone that he's just raised in and rolling behind the corner that way. That might be the other option with this guy. So you know how to get there with the draw. There have been some undercurls in the game, but that's the, uh, the bonus to this one is you don't have the dead area. We half those in the Yellow on the edge of the eight foot of the rock that you could jam on. A lot of room right now, but starting to make its move. Archers waited as long as they could for that rock to start to curl. Now, can they get it in far enough to the second shot? No. with the edge of the eight foot is second. That's going to make a piece under cover. And it provides a little bit of cover for the stone at the back of the forefoot as well. And just to uh, skip the team with the third rock throw, he's in the hack now. He can make a play on shot rock, but he can't stay buried. Dropped and making him playing the run again. Yellow on the red, on the red. Might be a double bolt for the red, but of the red. It's, it's not without risk if you don't kill them both. Give uh, Kevin Key a chance to make one better, and we just play that and could uh, overlap the corner guard. I don't think I'm going to have to run that. Play on shot rock. That stone that was just delivered is, is too usable for 
going to do is you split it, perhaps sit two that way, you can tap it up on the angle, you can get behind the corners. Hitting the back one doesn't really help you. I think in the end they settled on playing the breeze. Shot stone, back button. He really wants to sit right on the face here. He's helping the hacks. Just, just a little bit less ice. But I've had some undercurls in this game. Half to get the face to stay on the corner. But he really might be able to get the inside of it. Blast the two stones and rolling to uncover. Well, this thing looks like moving a little early. To get by that stone at the top of the eight foot. Not going to. Doesn't move it far enough, I don't think, to be what would be third shot right now. It's still fourth. It's three at the back of the four foot sitting shot. And it's just delivered his second, and the one at the edge of the eight foot is third. Tyler Cardi will look to. Second shot stone, go towards the corner, probably catches the communication, probably catches the back end of the other red stone, but should be able to get into a second shot position with some protection from the front. It's fairly quiet. It's the, the yellow red are so close together. I don't think there's any way you miss it. The red one. So you can hit this first yellow fairly thin. Looking for some curl now. They really get across the face just to make sure they pass it by their own and just touch it. Stone with the back of four foot. Not a bad result. It does leave a chance for the double, but if Corey drops and makes the double, his shooter won't be far enough in the rings to uh, look to make the double on the two reds at the top of the eight foot danger of jamming to play that. Make the straight back double. Your shooter is still in the third shot, and uh, his currently second shot is open on the side. That's an interesting call. Might be their best option coming in off their own. Oh. Might be the best result. Top shot. You're trying to hit the uh, red on the left if you look at it from the overhead. And not looking at the double, he's looking at where he can get the shooter to end up. So in that case, trying to pass it by the one at the back of the forefoot and stay angled on the one at the top of the eight. Thinking that would give him overlap rocks to come around with his last one. In the end, it looks like they're playing a the straight back double. I'd say that only because uh, Andrew Scutera swept the path to 
clear the two stones. We'll leave a shooter right there if he makes this. That's the other rock to use. I think he just knows he just drives it by the stone back and forth, but it's not the end of the world. It's the shooter will still be in a good spot to use. If you ever play the fifth and roll over the corner freeze on the other one, yeah, you need to stagger, but you look at it and hope it's fine. want to stuff it, and he did. Look at him, he's still sitting shot at the back of the button. Now the target looking at him, getting the green with him, looking to draw around to the top of the forefoot. Kind of like the tap on the stone that's already there, and use your shooter to protect the one at the back button. You don't have to move it six inches to have second shot, but you can move it a couple of feet if you wanted to. Thinking here has to be if you come right into the top four foot. In order for Corey Grafton to make the double, he probably has to leave his shooter. Could leave you an open shot on the side for the wings. You can't really play the double. But they're talking about when you come off the yellow into the shot stone. Tough shot. There's Martin now with the shot I was talking about. Kevin Cooey, perhaps now for the first time in the end, looking to see who's got second shot. Kevin might have been thinking he had second shot. He takes a look around the outside, so he realizes it's the yellow path. Weird looking at that top. There's nothing wrong with the shot he was calling originally either, though. If you uh, put this top of the forefoot, Tight enough together so that Corey Dropkin can't make the double and stay. That Yellowstone is wide open, too. That ice, I got a baby. He's, he's ended up deciding to play the tap on the red. You can sit to and protect Shot Rock with this. Tricky part here for Kevin Cruz. You can only see about half of that stone. You only want to roll 
Well, if you, know, if you hit it on half, you want the shooter to stay pretty much right where it is. You can't have a lot of weight here. If you overroll, you actually need Corey drop down half to get at shot stone. And you might be able to roll behind cover. Starting to cool now. So they're going to have to go to get any kind of close to the nose. Down, nudges it up. Probably left enough room for Corey Drockton to try to freeze. Wanted to roll just about the half a rock field further over. And at least he's got the run back on his own, but as it is, not going to have the chance to freeze. I think Dewey always had the yellow on the, uh, if you look at the overhead, the left hand side that can come off it. So this has to be locked right on the face. To an excellent game here this morning, well, afternoon now. Corey dropped him. The one point lead here if you play in the eighth. Facing two two encounters, needs the freeze here with his final stone. Force something out of Kevin Dewey. He locks this right on the face, maybe slightly on the broom side corner. Dewey might have no mistake with the try to throw this in and get the extra in, but. Leads away for Kevin to blast this out and get two. Right on the face, right on the corner, and boy, I don't know if he's even left the room to score. Might have to play the double raise. That's what he's looking at. The red corner guard. Onto the stone that he tapped up with the last one. Onto the stone on the button. And even if you make it hard to make it without killing the stone at the back of the button, possible. Yeah, what an outstanding draw by Corey dropped it. In danger of losing this game and Made it so good, he might be able to steal the win here without even having to play an extra inning. Had to queue it up on that angle just so that Kevin Cooley can't come off the yellow on the, the left as we look at it from the overhead. Had a jam on the red behind it. This is probably his only shot to score. Could still be there to score too. Can't really rule out anything here. We could see a steal. We could see Kevin Cooley pick up two. It's also possible we could see a single point scored for Kevin Cooley in an extra inning. Throwing a rocket here, it's really not important how hard you hit it, it's how precise you hit it. On the brush, this has got to be close. Red on to red, catches the edge of the yellow, moves it far enough that uh, the stone at the back of the button will count one. But we are going to have an extra end here in this C event matchup. Seven, two, Corey dropped in one more end to determine who moves into the qualifier. Light up your love for curling with our customizable neon LED lights from Letterlands. 
choose your new Neon Mixed Doubles partner or make a statement with a neon curling rock in your window. Also, actual letter ranks. Use discount code WOW for 15% off. Only at letterlamps.com. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed? More innovation? It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Swift Current is great because everybody that we do business with, we know on some sort of personal level. What I love about Swift Current is the vibrant arts and culture community. I really like Swift Current. We are not a big city, but the size of the city is really good and we have everything. Swift Current is a great sports town, great teams and great fans. People say, you know, good morning, hi, how are you, even though we don't know each other. So with the impact of my business and income, will this delay my retirement? I know you're worried, Marshall, but based on the original plan we came up with, you're only about six months behind. I thought it would be years, not months. You should feel good. Remember, you've got a plan. Thanks. With change comes questions. See the impact of your money decisions before you make them with RBC Wealth Plan. Dewey team played the long guard with their first one at the end, but didn't touch the center line. The drop the team able to play the pick shot. Push that stone to the edge of the playing surface, but doesn't touch the divider, so that's a legal shot. Dealt with one center guard. Shooter is in the way to take away any kind of a draw path. Happen to need it for the outdoor for the new uh, button over one. Uh, rocks have come yet. You can see that rock still there when you get to that point. You can throw the tighter guard now and Last little bit of brush just to make sure they're touching the center line this time. Thomas Hall being asked to come into the forefoot now around that center guard. He might elect to throw another guard, but that'll be the fifth stone in the end. Start playing a double field right after this one. Who really knows they can play the double field? Doesn't want them throwing doubles. He's going to call for this into the rings. Leave the face of the yellow. And it will drop the team of just straight field of guard if you do that. As long as they're not playing with doubles, you know you're going to have something to work with. Looking to come down to the face that's going a little bit strong on the side that has been just that little bit straighter. It comes right by everything to the back 12 foot. Expected. Mark Benner being asked to simply feel the center guard now.
comes across, touches that redstone that was just about out of play, and moves it into the rings. Okay, trying to decide where do we put the guard now. You know they're going to feel it. Just put the center line. You don't expect them to ever flash one of those. So looking to get uh, maybe a sliver of this underneath the yellow corner. You're kind of hoping that they at least have to play inside out to make the peel. Maybe they over curl close to the nose, maybe something that way. At the very least, you know that by playing that, it's not going to be any kind of double peel. Our center with the hit. Across this time behind that red stone, out of play. Just looking to mix up the position on these stones a little bit now with uh, where he's going now. Coming to the edge of the forefoot on the other side. And he's very precise with where he tapped the ice. Reason being that uh, the spot there you put it just ahead of the logos in the ice, and half a rock on either side is close to jamming something. See Kevin looking over his shoulder. You want to put this spot where they might jam it off that red one. Never going to feel it towards the middle where they could jam it into their own. the top edge of that stone and remove it from play. That's the bonus. No jams over on that side now. Where he pointed Kevin's first thought was to go up long beside the Yellowstone. Hopefully, tried the double peel and stuck it. It got a little bit closer to the center line that way. I think this was a question that came from Atkins. Did he just go into the 12 foot? Behind the corner guard. Not that he could steal the rock in the 12 foot, but it would still work as a guard. Later, or you would dig it across at the center there, across the hog line. A little deeper than what they had in mind, but he mostly buried. Andrew Stefera going to go after it with board weight. This is an either or if you rub the guard, it's not the end of the world. Never get by and make the hit on this one and roll back towards the middle somewhere. That corner guard no longer protecting enough of the rings that you'd ever have to worry about it. Even for Curl, he's got lots of room by the guard. Just touches it on the way by. Not enough to get it out of the rings, but does move it out from behind cover into the 12 foot. Continues to be Corey Dropkin sitting shot rock, stone at the top of the four foot, just the one guard to work with. Expecting the edge of the eight. That room, I think, uh, 
too. He's gone back to the idea he had in his last book of the longer guard somewhere up inside the yellow. That's all he's got left with his last one. He'll play the hit and roll over off that yellow. Didn't need a miss from uh, Corey Grafton. Might be some discussion just how far do you want to roll on the, on the last one. The old dead buried, you know, he's going to draw. Things first needs to make this guard. Do you expect that uh, Corey Dropkin will simply simply peel it? Playing the freeze here. This might be a freeze attempt. We've got a couple rocks here. Undercurl. This one really going sideways. Needed to be right on the face and it in a spot where uh, nose hit should kill them both. They dropped the big tip just a little bit off those on the center line side. to the open shot for your last one. Even if you just blast these out, lose your shooter. 7-2 really has no place to hide. He can get in behind that long yellow corner guard, but he's only going to be just full 8 foot. Stone the extra end here for Corey Dropkin. Makes the hit. He puts that red out of the side of 12 foot as well. Loses everything about a 4 foot. It's just the one Huey Stone at the back 12 foot sitting shot rock in the corner guard. He will look for a spot to put this rock in. <laughs> Interesting that I saw Tyler Tardy tap the top of the 8 foot on. The intern side, and that is the spot the drop the team has had trouble with in this entire game. A number of rocks run a little straight on them. So, if you're thinking, well, we need a rollout here, that may be the spot. Goto is tapping the 12 foot on that side, but the thinking there is that uh, Corey Drofton wants to draw the out turn, draw path to the button. That corner guard's in the way. There's still plenty of room to draw. It's just you wouldn't have access to the path you'd like to play on the out turn. Put one in the 12 foot. And I wind up to the edge of the 4 foot on the other side to take away the in turn path to the button as well. Still have all of the eight foot available. Could draw as if he was drawing behind the corner guard itself. A little danger of over curling close. In the end, Kevin Huey deciding he better just throw the draw to get as much protection as we can. We'll use that long corner guard. Probably doesn't want to be dead buried here. He'd like to stay as close to the four foot as he can. And you know that Dropkin's not going to risk a rollout. So if you're even half the end cover, he's not. He's not going after it. He's going to play the straight draw. It can be uh, 
quarter to half to then cover right on the tee line and just about touching the four foot. Probably the best you can do with it. He's been on this all the way down. He needs to get close to the tee line to get as much house as he can. They're going to have to work just to get raised. Puts it in the 12 foot. He is sitting too, but that really doesn't change the shot before he drops it at all. we will have the intern draw towards the button. He's not quite a big fight of the eight. Few rocks run a little straighter for them on this side, but as long as he's not heavy, that won't hurt him now. Structures pick it up early. More than just a light sweep on this as well. Easing up a little bit as they come into the top of the rings. Corey dropped him with his final stone in the extra end. Puts it right on the button. He will pick up the win here over Kevin Cooley. That moves. Dropped him into a qualifying game at uh, 545 local time today. A chance to go on to the playoffs. And Kevin Cooley has been eliminated from this year's Nutrien Ag Solutions Western Showdown. Still uh, more action yet to come from Swift Current today. Men's and women's play as they work towards the championship round. Tomorrow we will have all of the action for you here on the Sastel Throwing Stadium. Nutrien and a large portion of what our job is is to get fertilizer out with the carriers so they can get directed to the farms or to the different retail locations. We know that if we don't have the answer to something we're not afraid to reach out because we have support from everyone. We've got a really good team behind us. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium.